We're looking at a map of Asia Minor or Anatolia. We understand it as modern Turkey. And my purpose in looking at this map is to show where Paul on his three missionary journeys intersected with the region of Galatia. Uh, we won't be looking in depth at all the aspects of his uh, missionary journeys, but where it touches on Galatia. Before we get started, let me show you uh, where the two Antiochs are that we're concerned with. Uh, we frequently will mention Antioch because they played an important part in Paul's ministry. Over here you can see um, Antioch, Syrian Antioch. This church played an important role in Paul's ministry and in sending Paul and Barnabas and uh, various aspects. So this is Syrian Antioch. Over here we see Pisidian Antioch and uh, it comes into play as well. So let's take a look here at Paul's journeys. Let me get our um, marker ready for us here. So first we see that Paul is sent off from, uh, Paul and Barnabas sent off from Antioch. And he and Barnabas make their way to Cyprus and they go through the island of Cyprus, make their way to Paphos. They attend, uh, they go to uh, the various synagogues on the island and uh, a work is done there. But then where our concern begins is from Paphos, they took a journey up to Perga. This is where John Mark left Barnabas and Paul, went back to Jerusalem. And later we'll see that that plays uh, a part in Paul and Barnabas's relationship. From Perga, they travel up to Pisidian Antioch. Now here they are in Galatia, the region of Galatia. As we said before in a previous video, there uh, was an area that was understood to be ethnic Galatia. The Celts came down and, and uh, migrated to and invaded the area and there was an ethnic Galatia, but uh, through the Hellenistic period and then the Roman period, uh, you see that the upper and lower parts of Galatia were added. So what we have actually is a region of Galatia that goes beyond just simply those that were ethnically Galatians. So here in uh, Antioch in Pisidia, we uh, we see that, that Paul and Barnabas begin to make their impact in Galatia. So um, what it says to us is that the word of the Lord spread throughout the whole region. So the gospel was going forth. Jews were angry about what they were doing. They incited the God-fearing women of high standing. This can be found, by the way, in Acts 13. Um, around verse 49 and 50. So these God-fearing women of high standing and leading men of the city stirred up, and the Jews uh, stirred them up, and then they stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So it says in verse 51 that Paul and Barnabas and whoever was with them shook the dust from their feet in protest against them, and they went to Iconium. So from, Antioch, from Pisidian Antioch, they make their way to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. However, there was a plot afoot among the Gentiles. This is Acts 14, verse 5. Together with their leaders to mistreat them and to stone them. But Paul and Barnabas found out about it. And from Iconium, they fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derby. So in Lystra, Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, sort of following Paul and them. Uh, it wasn't enough that they 
uh, worked against them in their areas. Now they have followed them into Lystra. They stoned Paul, dragged him outside the city. Everyone thought he was dead, but he got up and went back into the city. And then the next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. They preached the good news in Derby, won a large number of disciples, and then they returned to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, and ultimately then made their way back to Syrian Antioch. Now, Paul's second missionary came along, and uh, what happened here is that Paul and Barnabas thought it'd be good to go back and check on those disciples that they had made. And Barnabas wanted to bring John Mark. But because John Mark had abandoned them when they got to Perga on the first missionary journey and had gone back to Jerusalem, Paul did not think he was fit to be with them on this journey. And so Paul and Barnabas had a great parting of the ways. And uh, Barnabas, as it turns out, set out and he went back to Cyprus. That's where Barnabas uh, was from. And, uh, but Paul and, uh, and Silas, they went up through northern Syria. They went through Cilicia. And it says that he came to Derby and then to Lystra. And that's where a disciple named Timothy lived. Timothy lived in this, in, in this area, in, in Lystra. His mother was a Jewess and a, and a believer. His father was a Greek. And it says that the brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Now, another thing that's important for us to to understand here, because the, the reason all this matters for us is that the book of Galatians was written to the churches in Galatia. So the question is, who are we talking about? And so we see that Paul makes his way into this region pretty regularly, but not just to Lystra and Iconium and Derby and Pisidian Antioch, but we are led to understand that there are many other towns. They traveled from town to town, it says uh, in Acts 16. And it also says that Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, have, and with this, this area here, and having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. So, so they traveled around this region, this entire area here, and preached the gospel and made disciples. And while there, as we see, picked up Timothy. And that was, of course, uh, a very important uh, addition to Paul's ministry. Now, on Paul's third missionary journey, um, uh, after his second missionary journey, he again made his way back to Antioch, which was uh, his home base, really. And after spending some time there, uh, it says Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia. So, once again, we see that Paul is traveling around the region of Galatia. Now, another thing that's uh, interesting about this is that while he, we, we understand from Acts 20, he's actually, I believe, in Macedonia at this point, but we understand that he is accompanied by several people. And one of those is Gaius from Derby. Okay. And then, of course, he has Timothy with him from Lystra. 
Now, it seems to me that this matters because even when Paul is somewhere else, not in the region of Galatia, he has with him these two men uh, whose homes are found in this area. And so when Paul would finish his missionary journey, there's no reason to think that these men didn't go back into their areas. And of course, they themselves would have had a continuing influence there and would have extended Paul's influence there. So when it's all said and done, um, it's very easy for us to see that Paul spent a great amount of time in the area of um, the southern portion of Galatia. All three missionary journeys tell us that he went there, made relationships there, made discipleships there. He felt a burden for these people. He felt the need to go back to check on them, to continue strengthening them. And uh, so then when we see this letter written to the churches in Galatia, we have no reason to think that it's not that it wasn't uh, addressed to the churches and the people in this area. Now, we can't say that Paul never went up um, north in the region of Galatia. And certainly we know that Paul did make his way up through this area um, as he was making his way um, to Macedonia. But we really don't have any record of Paul having uh, visited or written to or been in this area in northern Galatia. So it doesn't mean that he wasn't, but uh, there's uh, certainly his letter was addressed to the southern region. Whether others were, were included in that, uh, I would say is probably not as likely. And I think most scholars these days are landing um, in the, on that idea as well. Okay, so we've made that clear that Paul frequently uh, visited that area of southern Galatia and that his letter would have been written to the churches in that area.